Dave Aranda has officially named Blake Shapin as Baylor's starting quarterback for 2023. Is that the worst thing to ever happen to Baylor Athletics? You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Baylor. I am solely existent in Alaska the 49th state inducted into the union. And that's Harper Mayfield of the Baylor Lariat. Uh, He has made a lot of people very unhappy across college athletics and made some people very happy. BYU fans, UCF fans, Houston fans, wherever you may sit, everybody has an opinion on Harper Mayfield. My opinion is that I should thank you for being, uh, making locked on Baylor, your first listen every single day today. Harper's job is to debate. Uh, So I myself am a big truther of this guy. One, Blake Samillion Shapin, a guy that has been the starting quarterback for the Baylor Bears in the past. Harper is a Sawyer Robertson truther. And the one guy, uh, here's Cameron Stewart driving the the Blake train, uh, choo-choo all aboard. He is the conductor. The one guy who has to decide how it all goes down is this. This dude right here, Dave Aranda, and he has decided that Blake Shapin will be the starting quarterback for the Baylor Bears. And Harper, I hear that you don't like it. Yeah, um, and you've heard correctly. I don't. I don't like it. Um, just everything that we've seen from Shapin doesn't instill confidence in me. And when I think about what I want Baylor football to do, what I want them to do is to win games. And I don't think that Shapin is the guy that's going to do that for us. Um, you know, we came into last season with big expectations for him. We saw a lot of flashes in that shortened season he got um, the year prior, and he just didn't really seem to be able to deliver. And that was disappointing time and time again you know you would see the flashes and people say oh he's he's roughed up he's had a bad game and that happens to guys nobody's perfect all the time but I just too many times it was like oh he just needs one more chance he just needs one more chance at some point last year I was calling for Kyron Jones and we didn't get it and he's not in Waco anymore and do we want to keep running off talented quarterbacks so that we can lose games because of his inability to make decisions I sure don't And, you know, I think Sawyer Robertson obviously came in here with the expectation to compete for the job, not necessarily to get it right away, but to compete for it. And I believe that he did that. I'm not saying that there wasn't a QB competition. I believe that there was. Um, But I think even if he's, you know, he's obviously less experienced. We know that about him. Um, I think that his particular skill set lends itself to success a lot more than what Shapin has shown us that he can do. Do you want to know something crazy that I was just, just thinking about? You, you mentioned that Blake Shapin, you know, maybe not doesn't put Baylor in the best position to win football games. Mm. Do you know how many more football games Blake Shapin has won as a starting quarterback than Sawyer Robertson? It's, because it's, it's quite a few, and I'll give that I'll give that to Blake. It is exponential. I don't know if I have to break the numbers out on you. I don't want to really thwart what you're going for here. But the big thing that I circle with this is is experience. So point mm-hmm. made, right? Sorry, Robertson comes in. He's the new guy. Most pop JJ yeah. Joe said it on this show. Most popular guy in town is always the backup quarterback, especially mm-hmm. when you're QB shaping last year. So that has a 63% completion percentage. Not God awful. Not great. 2,800 yeah. yards, 18 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. The numbers at face value, you're like, Oh, what a serviceable Baylor quarterback. Mm-hmm. 20 years ago, you're thinking, Hmm, Mount Rushmore per chance, but obviously yeah. that has changed in the last decade of really good Baylor quarterbacks. However, I don't think we can overstate the value of continuity in college athletics. Having a quarterback who has been in the saddle now for a year and in the year prior started a Big 12 championship game through mm-hmm. 596 yards and the couple of starts that he got for five touchdowns, no interceptions, and right. looked like the next Baylor quarterback god. And on the flip side, saw you Robertson, who I like, love at Coronado. I am friends with him. I enjoy his presence. Six for 11, 23 yards, and an interception in his entire college career. Yeah. How can you justify that starting at my good university? Well, see, a lot of people said the same thing when uh, Gary Bohannon went down and Blake came in and Gary was healthy again. And people were like, oh, well, Gary got us here. And, you know, we know what he is and we know a lot less about Blake. And then all of a sudden it was Blake. And, you know, I saw those flashes when we went to the Big 12 championship and we went to the Sugar Bowl. I was like, man, I think Shapin can really play. I think there's I think there's something here. I think there's something to this guy. And ever since then, 
I feel like it has been continuously downhill. There are games last year that we should have won had he made different decisions and known how to take care of the football a little better. Um, and those are the frustrating ones to lose when it's not like it's not a he wasn't good enough thing. It's a it's a he wasn't good. It's he was good enough and he couldn't get it done. And when you look at the continuity there, that's what worries me is, yes, we're, we're signing on for continuity. And I and I can appreciate what that does for the program. But do we want continuity if continuity is six and seven? I I don't. And that's why, like, I think committing to shaping is committing to being an OK football team. You're going to win some games. You're going to win just enough to make your your fans believe. And maybe that's what Baylor wants. Maybe that's all Baylor wants. And that's, hey, if that's if that's what they want to do, Shapin is the guy. You're going to win just enough to be exciting to say, hey, man, no game is ever out of reach for us. And you're going to lose half of them. And I think Sawyer's ceiling much higher given the physical tools that he's shown that we've seen him use in high school. And again, like you said, he's limited experience in college. I'll hand up on that one. Yeah, he, he, ha- he doesn't have a whole lot of time under his belt for Mississippi State. Um, but I think the talent ceiling from Sawyer significantly higher. And if if you want to commit Shapin, that's fine. Commit to winning six games in the regular season, losing your bowl game. I um I ever tell you a story about a guy named Maximilian Duggan. Many, you, yeah. many, many have many have passed by without hearing the story of Max Duggan. A guy who similarly it was like, oh, he's bad. If you want Max Duggan to start a quarterback, you want to be bad at football. If you like consistency, be consistently bad. And here's what happened. Sonny Dykes heard those people. You know what he did? He benched the kid. He said, I want Chad Morris's son to run the show in Fort Worth. And and little did you know, that, that little Max Duggan guy I mentioned earlier went on to be my father. He went on to father a lot of people over the last year and showed what I think Harper, what I think is here's a little bit of revisionist history. This is something we're bringing into the new world Mm -hmm. is progression of quarterback is lost. It's no longer, Oh, the guy went six and seven. Maybe he goes eight and four next year, 10 and two and progresses like a normal college kid. It's who's next. Who's in the portal. Who can I get that can win me games right away? I think what we're missing is the idea of bringing in a kid and developing him over four years of college football, like a Sean Bell, like a J.J. Joe, mm-hmm. that that Baylor has thrived on for so long. Right, and that is the very much the, the traditional college football idea. And also, lest we forget, Chandler Morris threw for five hundred plus yards against One a Baylor time. defense that we One all thought time. that we all thought was pretty good, and everybody else said was pretty good. We're like, man, this Baylor team can really defend, and he, we gave up five hundred yards to that kid. So he wasn't bad either. Uh, um, but, you know, that is the traditional idea behind college sports. That a kid comes in, gets better over the course of four years, leaves, and is ready to go play professional sports. But that's not the way it works anymore. And we've seen that with the portal and on the way that players have all this freedom to move. So if you want to let a guy develop, that's fine. All the other talented young guys that you bring in behind him will leave and will go somewhere else and will win football games for a different school. And that's what really bothers me is that we bring in these talented guys and we say, hey, man, you have, you have a real chance to play here. But we're not going to make any changes because we we pick a guy and we stick to our guns. And I respect sticking to our guns like we did last season. We made Shapin the starter at the beginning of the season. When things got hairy, we decided to stick with Shapin because he was our guy. I understood the decision. It wasn't the one I would have made, but I understood it. And then you come into the offseason, you say, hey, we're looking for a lot of change. We're looking to really move things around. You know, There's a lot of room for this program to grow. And you make all the same decisions again. We saw where those decisions just took us. Yeah. What's the point? And so – as college football has evolved, college sports in general has evolved. We've seen Baylor get left in the dust in a lot of ways. You know, I know you've talked about it here on the show about NIL and the ways that Baylor's not keeping up. Do we want to fall further behind in the way that we're going to recruit and we're going to bring quarterbacks into our team? I mean, we've we've seen ourselves lose out on guys because of a variety of factors, but one of them has to be they know that man they can't they can't come in here and play right away because we've got a guy already and he's going to win us six games. Maybe not that many. And sure, maybe he gets better. But if he gets better and you lose out on something, you lose out on a guy behind him that's going to win you more, what's the what's the point? You know, um, so I, look, I get it, right? That's a whole like, oh, you know, recruits see this and they, yeah, yeah. If I, if I am, insert name here, number one overall, Arch Manning, right? I, I don't mm-hmm. see six and six Baylor and Blake Shapin and think, oh, that's the guy they're starting. I want to go there. For right. sure, I, right? It, it's I don't know if it's a complete deterrent, but you don't like mm. it. 
Uh, at the same time, if you are the 20th overall quarterback in the country, you have offers from Purdue, Baylor, Georgia Tech, like you know, wait, Texas Tech, TCU, mm-hmm. even some serviceable teams. But look right. at these, look at this team that's committed to development and not bringing in transfers. I like that. Committed to development too with a guy in Blake Shapin who is mediocre. You know, like he's he's not sucked. And that's what I want to get into next is yeah. who can win this team the most games. Uh, I'm way past my time for an ad read, but I do want to play this little fun game. I'm going to say some names. You're going to tell me what you think about those names. Jalen Daniels, quarterback at Kansas. What Just like five second blurb. I think he's really good. I think there's a chance he's the best quarterback in the Big 12 this season. Will William Howard, Kansas State University. Tears up Baylor. Unsure how good he is as an actual QB. Tall guy. Hunter Deckers, Iowa State. Don't know a whole lot about the, the Iowa State. Tyler up. Shuck, Texas Tech. Um, Tech's probably going to play three quarterbacks still. Shuck's probably the most pure QB out of all of them. I think Tech's going to be pretty good. Quentin Ewers, Texas. Scares me sometimes from a talent perspective because you see how good he can be. Um, has to stay healthy. Even then, they maybe give the job to somebody else. Spencer Sanders. I think... Middle ceiling, but also middle floor. You're not going to get anything great. You're not going to get anything horrible. Blake Shapin plus. Would you like Blake Shapin plus as in Blake Shapin's better than those guys? Uh, no, as in like Spencer Sanders is like, if you subscribe to the Blake Shapin streaming uh, service, uh, and you would get Blake Shapin plus, you would then get Spencer Sanders. Uh, what do they all have in common, do you think, before I reveal this? Uh, you're going to tell me that Blake Shapin has like a better record in the Big 12. Ha ha! <laughs> PFF grades. Dylan Gabriel, number one. Max Duggan, number two. The third best quarterback in the Big 12. Blake Shapin per PFF above Jalen Daniels and Will Howard and Quinn Ewers and Spencer Sanders, who is actually really analytically bad. Blake (laughs) Shapin, better than all of them. So now what, Mayfield? Now what do you do? See, what I do now is I take you back to the TCU game. Heartbreaker in Waco, really cold day. A lot of students stayed into their Thanksgiving break to watch this game. And we go to this game, and we're ahead for a lot of it. We're like, man, we're going to knock off TCU. We're going to ruin their chances at the playoff. We're getting them back for 2014. Go Bears. And they come down, they score, and they go ahead, and we're like, man. Or they you know get close enough to make it a game, and we're like, okay, now what do we do? We have a drive, and – Shapin rolls out to his left. Ben Sims is wide open past the first down marker. No one is there. No one is in the way of him. He's looking at Ben Sims like I'm looking at the screen and you right now. And he doesn't throw the ball. He tries to run slides before the first down marker. We turn it over. They win the game. And I see that. And I say, uh, the analytics, that's great. I, I love seeing good numbers like that. But when you see a decision like that that loses you a football game and hands one to your biggest rival, they go to the play, they go to the national championship game where they got smacked around and I loved it. I just it's indefensible. He doesn't know how to run. Um, he's theoretically really athletic, but he's not good at running. They're different, they're different. Um, and you know, like Gary wasn't as fast, was a better runner with the football, understood a little more about that, and was a guy that you could rely on to make decisions. I don't think Shapin, I mean, I'm sure he's gotten better at it. Um, as because that's what happens, like you talked about, you get better um the more you play. His decision making is what scares me so much. Um, he, you, you know, the talent you see it sometimes. You know, we've certainly seen it. Big Twelve Championship game. I was like, this guy's the best football player that's ever lived. No one could be possibly be better than him. And you see something like that. You're like, could anyone possibly be worse? Many have said that he couldn't. So I just, you see the decision making, and you struggle to say that this is a guy that the team rallies behind when you, you know that you go to the locker room and Ben Sims is telling guys. Man, I was open. Man, I was open. Um, we could have had it. We could have had it. And everybody's thinking it, whether or not they say it. You know, you know who. When you play in a team sport, you know who the good players on the team are, and the good players on the team aren't. Um, and I just, I, I just don't know if he's that guy for us. Have you never sinned? <laughs> I've never lost a game to TCU. I tell you what. I, you think like over under one sin a week? How about five? Do you not make mistakes? <laughs> Things happen. Okay. You know what? Things happen. I don't get on. I've never been up. What was it? 28. At least two scores. Maybe three. Yeah. At least two scores on TCU. 
with the ball in my hands and an easy shot at first down, a throw I could have made, by the way, and I'm not good at throwing the football, um, and decided I'm going to slide before the first down marker because I lack field awareness so much. Yeah, well, he got hit really hard at West Virginia and everything changed. Uh, Harper and I both saw a dog today. It was a German short hair. I have a German short hair at my house. Its name is Sadie. <laughs> Turns out this German short hair that we saw in Whittier, Alaska. All, look at that. Look at Alaska patch. Also named Sadie. Um, wild thing as I started thinking as we were driving home. Oh, my gosh. That was a bird dog. And it's such a good bird dog, too. A German short hair. And then I remembered it's my second favorite type of bird dog. Number one being the shorts. They're the best shorts in America. Sometimes I wake up and I think, oh. I haven't done laundry in like three days. All my underwear are dirty because I go through like four pair a day uh, for assorted reasons that you don't need to know. Then I remember I have bird dogs. They're like khaki shorts, but they look a lot better and they stretch and they have a, a slim fit with built in underwear. So I don't have to wear my own. I can wear the bird dogs underwear uh, and it makes you look real sculpted because the underwear, it, it, it hugs your thighs and the outside stuff looks like Lululemon. It's like Lululemon, but it's cooler and it's better. My mom thought it was Lululemon, but I think they look better uh, right now. If you go get a pair of bird dogs, you can get a free tumbler, a free tumbler that is like a Yeti style. It has a bird dogs logo. Uh, they're also anti stink sweat. They have an anti stink fabric which is awesome. Uh, birddogs.com forward slash locked on college in a promo code locked on college birddogs.com forward slash locked on college locked on college is your promo code. Get a free Yeti tumbler, get a free one birddogs.com forward slash locked on college. Go do it. I'm offering it to you for free. Harper, um, who wins more games at quarterback you or me? I've never seen you throw a football. Uh, I've seen well, myself through one, and I personally don't love my odds. <laughs> I I do lead the Baylor intramural. I think I may have a record for most interceptions in within five or six passes. I think there were six passes and maybe three or four interceptions. It was it was a lot. Um, which you know, not as good as Blake Shapen or Sawyer Robertson. I'll give them both that. I also kind of like R.J. Martinez. Um, as I look at Sawyer Robertson, right, I, I'm hearing a lot of. Here's what I'm hearing a lot of from your points is newness, right? Almost like in anything that's not Blake Shapin is better than Blake Shapin at this point in the road. And as someone who on this show multiple times last year, namely after the Texas game said, I'm done. I can't take it anymore. I will not support him. Uh, yeah. It's very weird that I am on the train of this man. Can you explain to me? Maybe your case is that. Can you explain to me how your case is not just anyone but Blake Shapin? Yeah. So one thing that um, we talked a lot about on the uh, Baylor, you know, student media podcast this year, the one that I did with Foster you Nicholas, can, my co-host you can plug there, it. You can plug was, um, what's the name of the podcast? Don't feed the bears for anyone who wants to go back and listen to some of our second listen uh, every day. Yes. Yeah. Stuff about football there. One of the things we talked about a lot was that the Grimes offense, we saw when they were really confident in our personnel was so much more creative you know, in 2021 than what we saw this past year. And that was interesting to me because, you know, we like first year I was like, man, this is a really exciting offense. And granted we had, you know, a running back room that we didn't have this past year. You know, you lose Abram Smith, you lose Tristan Ebner, very high impact players. So I get it. You're losing some of your weapons there, but you know, the passing plays that we would call even for Gary, who's not a great thrower of the football. That was never something that anyone was like, man, <laughs> you got to watch this kid sling it. He's got to, you know, real big time pro caliber arm. And he wasn't bad, but I think sure. Shapin's arm is similar. Maybe it's a little stronger, but it's you know, better. It's neither better one of them. Than, yeah. Yeah. Neither, neither one of them are, you know, gunslingers in the traditional sense where he's like, he's going to throw it 70 yards on his knees or whatever. Um, I felt like you saw the offense get so much more conservative in the play calls because they didn't trust who they had on the field. You know, we saw so many things where it was like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And it's all, it's all crazy and new. And when you look at who Grimes has had success with at the quarterback position, it's the Sawyer Robertson prototype, the, the six, four mobile strong arm, you know, can get in there and take hits and stuff like that. And those are the guys that like, when we brought Sawyer in, I was like, this is a Grimes pick. We're seeing him come in because this is the guy that he was like, I want, here's the things I want for my quarterback. Bum, 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 bum. And the Baylor was like, okay, we'll see who we can get. This was the guy they found. And so I saw him come in and I was like, 
Okay, now we're working to try and get back to that point where we trust everybody that's out there to execute the offense. And look, I know we had lost some different receivers, you know, no longer had Tyquan Thornton and stuff like that. So the weapons go away a little bit. You got, you have to get a little nervous there. But when you're running halfback dive on third and 11 because you don't trust the guys to run a pass play, I mean, it's it's an unserious offense. You can't look at that and say that that's a, that's a play call that you make to win a football game. You know, you get down there and you're like, third and 11. <laughs> I know what we're, we're going to run it in between the tackles with a guy who weighs 190 pounds. You know? Or you, you go for a Monterey Baldwin jet sweep on third and 14. And <laughs> in your own end zone. Yeah. 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 You see him right there. He's going to get him. But we're going to run it anyway because ah, we, man, we really don't want to throw the ball. Were you and a big so, Blake Shapin fan uh, while Gary was quarterback? Uh, no, I liked I liked Gary. I was a Gary okay. guy. Okay. When, he, when we had the chance to bring Gary back for the last couple games, I was like, I think we should. Uh, just because he was – Is there a significant difference between six foot and six foot two? Um, I think in sports there can be. Two inches in general is life, way above average. That much. Right. In sports, I think there can be. Two inches again, way above average. Is there a difference between six foot two and six foot four? Again, I think the taller you are in sports, especially in the court at the quarterback position, obviously just you know, to a certain limit, you don't want a seven foot, 150 pound quarterback in there. Yeah. Um, that guy's gonna get torn to pieces. But you know, be you Beefo <laughs> in uh in junior high I had an NCAA my career player named Beefo, last name Brady. <laughs> he was seven foot tall, 350 pound quarterback, and boy could he dish the rock. Beefo, last name Brady. Had to be specific. The o, it wasn't O Brady, it was Beefo Brady. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I'm with you. You don't want Beefo at quarterback. Right, right. And but you know, you look at those guys that are the prototype and you look at a guy, you know, Thomas Brady. Yes. Yeah. Shapin listed at six foot, six foot, nothing, one ninety two, um, mm -hmm. and Sawyer six, four two ten. Mm -hmm. If you put those two guys next to each other and said, which one of these guys knowing nothing about them, which one of these guys do you want to play quarterback for your football team? I'm taking Sawyer Robertson seven days a week and twice on Sunday. Well, you could put me next to Blake Shapin. I'd be four inches taller. And you'd be like, Oh, well, I guess it's the big guy. Um, well, okay. I mean, let's look at, uh, you go to the NFL draft and everyone's like, Bryce Young can't possibly be good. He's short. That almost uh -huh. cost him being the number one pick. Cause people were like, he just, he can't, he can't be good. He can't be good. Kyler Murray. They said the same thing. And to some extent, I mean, Kyler Murray has not been as good as some people thought he would be. Yeah. Well, one of the best quarterbacks of the last decade named Zach Wilson, OC being Grimes, six mm -hmm. foot two. Uh, you know, not that crazy off from Blake Shape, kind of a you know, shorter guy compared to your big mm -hmm. gunslingers. And and Grimes won with him. So I don't you know, that just what you know, a little nugget out there. Zach's Zach exists. He loves those cougars. Um yeah. BYU, of course. <laughs> now, also didn't go on mission. 23 years old. I didn't know that he was that young. I did not mm -hmm. know Zach Wilson was that young. You couldn't look at him and tell. <laughs> Kid looks yeah. like he's 15. <laughs> Jeez. Um, with a little headband on. Uh, the last question before we I'm running out of time. Where does if if Blake Shapin's bad for Baylor and and Sawyer Robertson comes in and he's bad, or if one is bad or they're both bad, or in any scenario where the Baylor quarterback situation is bad again, mm -hmm. what does that do to Dave Aranda for the Bears? Man, nothing good. Uh, well, also I think yeah, I, I'm gonna assume we're saying quarterback situation being bad equals losing games. Um, right. Because yeah. every now and then you get the rare team that that doesn't it doesn't happen like that. But yeah, Bohannon. Yeah. Bohannon wasn't a great quarterback. He was just no. like, oh yeah, that's an okay quarterback, and Baylor won games. Yeah, game manager, and sometimes that that's what works for teams. But we also had elite running backs, so trade off. Um, true, true. But I think if if we're in the hole all season, it gets really tough for me to say that Dave needs a lot more time in Waco. Um, I think. So you're saying the, seat, out, the seat's hot at least. Does if I think in the event that Baylor goes five and seven, six and six this year, bad quarterback play being at the center of it, you're saying the mm -hmm. seat is hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, who knows, maybe there's not a name out there that we like more. Um, and if that's the case, I'm okay with that. I, th I would love to have Dave as a DC. I really would. I just think in college football, you need the leader of men, rah, rah guy. And at least 
publicly, Dave is not that way. I imagine privately, he's not that way either. There's nothing he can do about that. Um, but I think it's hard for a lot of guys that, cause some guys that'll work for, and then there's some guys that are like, man, does coach, uh, coach isn't getting excited about this. It's hard for me to get excited about it. Um, and so that's always been my kind of qualm with Dave as a college football coach. Great, great if he X's and O's, and that's what's given him the success he's gotten. Um, and some guys, like I said, respond well to the the calm, cool, and collected stuff. And some guys want your, you know, to contrast him to other Baylor coaches in the past. The one that always gets brought up is Matt Rule, who was the, the you know, ex- almost exclusively Mr. Raw Ron. It came down to the X's and O's. He was like, nah, I don't, I don't really, I don't really Opa. do that. Yeah. So you get that trade off, and I think that's where Dave can suffer. And I think if we're bad again, that's where he, where that's where it'll happen. All right. Well, uh, that was a really long way beating around the bush to say, Dave, let's win this year. So the whole hot seat thing doesn't Please, have to happen. That's all, the, all I ask of you. The conversation will be had if Baylor goes six and six or five and seven, that, Oh, what's going to happen in the future? Um, I'm Drake Toll. That's Harper Mayfield. Uh, this has been Locked on Baylor. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. If you come back Wednesday, I've got a great show plan, a big show plan. We're going to have a lot of things on it. There are going to be, uh, there's going to be a guest. I uh, can't tell you who yet, but it's going to be nuts um, as the, as every show is. Thanks for making Locked On Baylor your first every single day. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with Harper? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section uh, and like and subscribe for more content. Uh, thanks for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. This has been... Huh, uh, thanks for coming on the show, Harper. Of course. Locked On Baylor.